Hi, my name is Daniel Santiago, and on this Hilt Math Skills Series video, I'll be talking about extensions for Hilt. This will be a short and sweet video. We'll go over some real examples of an extension as a motivation starter. Uh, we'll show a simpler idea because it can get complex, but a simpler idea can help you uh, get started. Uh, we'll show you how to generate some code because an extension does generate some code. Uh, and then at the end, we'll go over a small summary and more practical ideas for extensions. So you might be wondering, what exactly is a Hill extension? Well, in essence, it's some sort of code generating tool that creates modules and entry points for Hill. The modules at new bindings and the entry points enable some sort of injection to non-supported frameworks or to access those bindings directly. Along with the code generator tool, there's some helper classes and an additional annotation. Extensions are really useful because they can help you support patterns and libraries without having to wait for Hill to do so. One real world example of an extension is Works Manager's extension. This extension is not part of Core Hill, even though it's part of the initial release. The extension is divided into two parts, into two artifacts. Hill work defines the Hill worker that kicks off the annotation processor. It also has a helper class that you might be familiar with, Hill worker factory. And then the Hill compiler is the other side of the extension that has an annotation processor that generates code. Let's see how it works. It's really easy. You have a worker annotated with Hill worker, and then a module gets generated for it. The module basically binds the worker into a multi map. And now on the runtime part in Hill work, there's a, a, a Hill module that uses that multi-map and creates a, the helper class, the Hill worker factory, which is what you configure work manager with. And bam, that's it. Your workers are now dependency injected. The real reason this works well, I've seen the reason you're able to generate modules and entry point and they get aggregated to Hill is because Hill has a mechanism for aggregating these sort of classes. And this is key to enabling extensions. Hill has this mechanism, which basically finds modules and entry points along uh, your class path to install them on the right components. So if you have an app, and this app has modules, and it depends on other libraries, and they all have modules that get installed, Hill will be able to go along your transit dependencies and aggregate those modules and entry points into the root module, with it, which is your app. This is important because you will be able to generate code and then Hill will pick that up. Now let's go over a more simple example. All the code that I'm about to show you, it's on GitHub, which is, uh, you know, you can look it up and it'll be a good starting point for creating an extension. In this example, we we basically want to reduce some boilerplate code, especially if we have a single interface implementation. So assume we have an authenticator interface and we bind it into an implementation, you will usually write a module for it with a method with that binds. So we want to reduce this module. We basically want to automate it by generating it. Be aware this example is very simple. The value proposal is very small, but we'll talk about some more realistic ideas later on. The way we would do this is we create a custom annotation, let's call it install binding, and we just put it on our implementation. And then what we would do is we would generate that equivalent module that we would have written. Now you might be wondering, okay, so how do we generate this code? Well, we can use an annotation processor. Annotation processor is a process that occurs within the compiler when converting sources into classes. Basically, before the sources actually compile, the compiler will look for annotation processors, register to process certain annotations, and it'll run them. And if these processors generate new sources, then it'll go ahead and see if they can be processed by another annotation processor and so on. And as long as sources are generated, more rounds will be run until eventually no new sources are generated, and then your sources get compiled, whether they were generated or handwritten. So if we go back to our example, if we had an install binding on our implementation, what we would do is we generate a module that would be equivalent to what we have handwritten. And 
because of the aggregating mechanism, Hill will be able to pick this up and that binding will be available. Now there's two important parts to create an extension. You do have to use these two extensions shown here, the generate to input and originating element uh, to be able to make things work very well. Let's go over them. Generate through input is something that you put on your custom annotation. Specifically, it helps Hilt wait until your annotation processor finishes generating code so that then it can do its discovery mechanism. Otherwise, if Hilt starts to look for entry points and modules too early and you haven't generated code, it'll miss out. So by annotating your custom annotation with generate through the input, you let Hilt know, hey, I will be generating some modules and entry points. Uh, the second annotation you need to be aware of is originating elements. This goes into modules and entry points generated. It helps Hilt figure out whether the module and entry point generated goes for a single test or all tests. In this example, we have an install binding in a nested class of a test, and the module that gets generated in its originating element has the test class. Uh, as reference. And this basically tells Hilt, hey, this module that was generated is only for that test. That's a simple example. Uh, it's on GitHub. You can take a look at it. It's really helpful uh, as a reference for creating an extension. To recap, you know, to create an extension, we start by defining a custom annotation. We add generic root input to it. And then we create an annotation processor that will generate some module or entry point based on that custom annotation that we made. And then finally, in our code base, we either use that binding directly or provide some sort of helper class to use the generated entry points or modules. Now, uh, the example again that we show was very simple. If we start to think about something more realistic, uh, we can kind of divide it into sort of three patterns. Uh, the first one being if you have a repeated pattern in your project where you every time you create a class, you create a module for it and you put it on a multi-binding map. Think of it like some sort of clearable or some network interceptor. Hill can help you automate that if you create an extension because then you would simply annotate that implementation with your custom annotation and a module will be created for it. So this can help you uh, with uh, productivity and even possibly privacy related things as it would make sure things are added and clear if it's like a multi-map of clearables. Uh, the other sort of pattern is supporting member injection on a custom component. This is similar to what Android Entry Point does where we generate an entry point for your activity and fragment, and then we create a subclass that uses it. So you could technically do the same with some other UI component or some other non-standard uh, UI framework, possibly not owned by your code base. Last but not least, there's this category of custom uh, component hierarchies. Sometimes you might want to mirror bindings from one to the other and you can automate that also with an extension where it would generate a, a module uh, for both components or based on one module it will generate the other and so forth and yeah and that's basically it so hopefully uh, this is very helpful and gets you motivated to create an extension maybe publish them open source and others can use it we'll see anyway thank you so much mm -hmm.